Welcome to the RX HDX introduction. The purpose of this video is to help you be successful in getting everything set up, configured to be successful with a POC with the incubating RX HDX. You here, see here the primary slide. This primary slide is about the incubating RX HDX. You can see here that it's a simple device. It's based on the Raspberry Pi platform. It has a HDMI, analog audio out, Kensington port, Ethernet port, and four USB ports. This slide is referencing the secondary display adapter, or as we call it, the SDA. This is based on the Pi Zero platform. And what you'll do is you'll use this device, and you'll connect this device via USB port to the primary RX HDX from USB to the USB port on the SDA. Please be sure that you use the USB port on the SDA to ensure that you're able to establish the network connection and be able to play the video on the Pi Zero for, this, for the secondary display adapter to allow you to have full dual screen display access when you're in your Citrix session. It is important to note that when you are not in a Citrix session, the SDA will display the primary or the uh, basic system logo currently that is the Citrix logo. Okay? Again, the SDA will only display a secondary display option when it is connected to a Citrix session. Okay? Next, we're gonna talk about the end computing management portal. The way you get access to the incubating management portal is simply go to www.incubating.com and you'll see a sign in or log in or register option on the web page. Once you do that, then you'll be able to connect and you'll see an icon here called the management portal. You go into the management portal and there are several functions that you can perform when you're in the management portal. What you'll do with your RX HDXs is you'll select my RX HDX deployment. And once you are here, there's a couple of things that you really need to be aware of. Number one is this is the area that says Upload RX HDX. This is actually what you'll do. You'll select to upload a client list that you'll get from the management software, the No Touch Center, to be able to register your devices for warranty as well as software information. Once you've uploaded your client list into the management portal, then you'll see access for the software downloads. In the software download section, obviously, this is where you can get the, uh, the basic virtual appliance. This is the standard base image for the virtual appliance for the No Touch Center. By default, it comes down as an OVA file that you can convert to uh, any other hypervisor platform if you want. As such in my case, I actually have downloaded and converted it for, for Hyper-V. This is where you'll see the updates for the virtual appliance once you have the virtual appliance installed and up and running, and periodically we'll, we will issue uh, updates to the virtual appliance, and this is where you collect the software for that. This is where you'll see the firmware or image updates for the endpoint devices. So once you've registered your devices, you'll be able to come in here, you'll be able to select download, and you'll be able to download updates for your virtual appliance devices. Once you've done that, you'll be able to take those, pull them down. Personally, what I like to do is I like to map a network drive over to my virtual appliance. And in this case, you see I've got it on my network. I've mapped the network drive to 192.168.145.28 to the CERT directory. And you see the virtual appliance has a file store readily available where you can drop image files, this is all the different images, and you can drop your certificates to be able to push your certificates out to your devices automatically. So it's important to know, again, by default, the virtual appliance, the No Touch Center, does have a file store that you can utilize to push firmware files uh, and certificates out to your devices. Okay? Now that we've established that, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you some basic pieces about the No Touch Center itself, the appliance. If you go to the virtual appliance, you can go directly uh, via the IP address to the appliance. And once you're on the appliance, you can go ahead and log in. And this is where you'll be able to perform basic management functions for the appliance, okay? Such as things where you'll be able to do the basic configuration. You'll be able to set up the firewall. You'll be able to get system logs. This is where you'll perform updates or where you'll update uh, load files into to update the virtual appliance itself. Replication, password, obviously reboot, shut down the virtual appliance as necessary. It's important to know in here, like I said, with the file store, you can go ahead and select the file store here. And this is where you'll see the URLs that are available to the file store. And you will use these URLs in your no Touch Center to help you uh, primarily for things such as the certificates, etc. Like I said, this is where you can see the certificates. This is where you'll also put wallpapers and so on, all the files that you would want to make available to the No Touch Center. Now, before we go to the No Touch Center, one of the other things that I want to point out to you is that you can actually configure the devices to have direct access to the devices via a browser. 
typed the wrong address there. 192. Here you see, again, I've opened a browser directly to my RX HDX device. And once I do that, I have access to go ahead and do the configuration files. This is if I wanted to configure devices one-on-one -on -one per se, or if I was helping an individual remotely, I would be able to go in and set different settings throughout this. The key element that I like to point out to everybody in here is this is where you also collect the support file. So if you are having diagnostic problems or problems where you need to call in competing support, and our support team asks you to collect a support file, this is where you'll actually click on the support file, and it will download that file to your local browser that you can then in turn email off to end competing support teams. I'm now going to go ahead and log into the, the No Touch Center itself, the management piece. So I'm going to go ahead and click Log In. Now, once I'm logged in, this is where I'll be able to do uh, features and set settings to the devices. Um, the principal thing that you're going to want to know about this is probably regarding automatic discovery and, and et cetera. So what you'll want to do, the virtual appliance by default has a host name of TCMGR. So if you set up a host record or DNS A record for TCMGR, when the RX HDX devices boot up, by default they will broadcast looking for that host name and they will automatically come into the no touch appliance and they will come into the unassigned group. Before we go into the individual steps of configuring the devices, um, a couple of things that I want to point out in here is number one, if you go to the resources section, support, client list, this is where you'll actually be able to download the client list of all your devices that are registered to your no-touch center, and this is also the file that you will upload to the management portal for the warranty information about your devices. Okay. Now, once you're in here, you can go into Tools, and um, in the Tools section right here, you can see by default, the first thing you see is the ability to discover devices. This is if you wanted to do a network discovery. So you can specify a single IP address and say discover the device, or you can type in a range of devices. Okay. This is also where you'll be able to see the announcement log when your devices have checked in um, the last time. So this is more used for diagnostic purposes. Um, when you're in here, um, it is important to know that this is based on an inheritance policy. So anything that is selected in this area is selected at this level. Anything that is not checked here means it is inherited from above. Okay. So again, now we can go into the individual groups, and this is where we can start to see actions and the things that we can do with the devices. Um, first, you see under actions, we can reboot, we can announce. And announce in this case is what's used to communicate between the, the virtual appliance and the endpoint. So the endpoints send announcements to the no touch center, the no touch center send announcement requests out to the endpoints, and that's how the communications and the uh, update configurations transfer between the devices. Okay. Um, in here, uh, again, at the group level, in this case happens to be the Nashville level, this is also where you can set the auto assignment. So if you have, again, your host record for TCMGR, and in this case I've got my auto assignment set up so that anything that comes in in a 192.168.145 asterisk network will automatically be assigned to this group. Once it gets assigned to this group, then the group settings that are set here will automatically apply. And this is where you're going to set things such as the services. Example in my case, so for this group, if I go in, under services, I've got it set so all of my devices that are in the net group Nashville will have web-based administration turned on. That's where you saw earlier where I was able to open a browser directly to the terminal. Because this is my lab, I've also got the terminal set up so that I can allow SSH login. That way I can log in and have access to the root file system for troubleshooting purposes and assisting, assisting other customers. This is also down here. If you notice, this is where you'll be able to en enable screen shadowing or what most of us use as VNC. So you'll set up to allow screen shadowing, set the port number, and this, and this is where you'll set your password. So now I would have access, VNC access directly to my terminal, and I will show you that. So I'm going to open VNC, type in the IP address of my terminal, say connect, and you'll see I now have being requested for the password that is applied, and this is the same password that I've set up for my other administration. 
and now I have access to my terminal. Okay. So that's how you gain VNC access, is you go into the group settings and set up the screen shadowing piece. Now, as with anything else, you can uh, configure multiple other settings. Um, uh, let's go back to one other primary setting that I like to show people, is, and that is, is for security. So we talked about services earlier, now we're going to talk about security. In here, this is where I've got selected that I want to download this certificate by default on boot for every device that's in this group. Now remember earlier when I talked about the file store with a virtual appliance, this is where you get the URL from the file store to be able to put in here. Again, you remember we mapped the drive. This is my certificate in the virtual appliance. Go back to that. And remember, under File Store, this is where I get the URL for my certificate. Okay, So I copy this URL, go into the management piece, and that's where I put it. So now this group of devices on boot will download the certificate. Okay, Again, back to the group of Nashville. I can rename it. I can create groups or I can add devices. Um, I can then go into additional group settings, and this is where I can go, in, go ahead and say I want to create connection, and then within those create connections, you can create your Citrix connections as appropriate. Also in here, you notice by uh, default, I've got checked at the group level that I want all of my devices to get client OS image of, and this happens to be the latest version of firmware that's available at the time of doing this recording. But you'll see the multiple image files are those that are listed that are available in the file store. If I went to my image directory, sorry, I went to the wrong directory there. But again, it's the uh, file store on the appliance. Okay, and that's how you automatically assign firmware. And then, of course, you can say at announce, at boot, or never. So you can control when the devices get the firmware updates. Now, going further down through the group, in this case, I happen to be selecting a single device. This is my dual display device. And in here, this is where I've configured my Citrix connection. In this case, I've selected Program Neighborhood for my connection type. You can see all the different types. So you'll prim primarily either select Program Neighborhood or Storefront for the connection with these devices. This is where you put your URL. And of course, then you can have the option to auto automatically include your domain name if, if that's what you want to be able to do. Um, once you've got your connection, then this part that says Citrix, this is actually the part where, if you will, think about the um, ICA client individual pieces that you'd be able to set, you know, for the audio properties, um, you know, enable the UDP audio. Um, the one that I like to point out down through here is this is also where you'll see the RTME pieces. So it's important, some of these things you may want to go through and look at, but by default, everything should be set ready to go for you. You shouldn't need to play, uh, change these. But again, depending on the environment and how things are set up, you, you may have to go in and uh, configure some of these individual settings. Another thing that I do like to point out with these is when you're talking about the dual display devices and going in for the configuration for the dual displays, um, by default, typically everybody wants to go to display and they feel like they need to make changes to these options. For the dual display, you do not need to change these. Leave these at default and that will allow your policy for the Citrix H.264 desktop to control the dual display, not these settings, okay? Um, again, it's important to note, for dual display, you do not need to make changes to these settings. Okay, so anyways, going, moving along, uh, I'm going to point out here that there are multiple things that you can set in here. Obviously, like you can go in and set the URL for the wallpaper. You would get that URL from the file store, again, that we showed earlier. Um, and you can say how you want it to be applied and all those types of settings. I'm not going to go through each and when, uh, each one of the individual settings that are in here. You can see that there are multiple things to do. It's key to note that obviously you'll want to be able to download and use the No Touch Center to manage the devices for full scale. You can configure the devices for automatic assignment because by default they will show up in the unassigned group unless you have the auto assignment rules. Be sure to set your DNS record for TCMGR. That way the devices will automatically come in. And then remember you can always get firmware updates and et cetera from the end computing management portal. Okay, I hope this has been informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to End Computing Support. Um, you can go to www.endcomputing.com 
and in the software or support self-help section is where you'll find access to all the KBs. This is where we put our knowledge base articles and in here you'll see the RxHDX. And the, probably the most important one in here is, if you will, is the user guide. You can select on that. And that takes you to the wiki that has all the information about configuring the devices in more detail. Okay? Hope this helps you out. I hope you have success. If you have any questions, give us a call.